Okay, sounds great. Katie Stam, thanks for joining us this morning. You have been on a media blitz the past 48 hours. What has it been like for you? Oh my goodness, it's been an absolute thrill. I've never been to New York before, so what a great trip to New York, you know, getting to go around to all of my favorite shows and get to call into all of my favorite radio stations. And now I get to come back and I get to I get to do some stuff with some local media as well, which is really wonderful. Have they told you when you'll be able to return home? Because I'm sure you were just whisked away right to New York. <laughs> I was. Almost as soon as the crown was put on my head, I was whisked away to go do a bunch of media interviews and to do my very first press conference. And I left the following day to come here to New York. I actually don't get to get back to Indiana for about six weeks. Then I'll be able to stay at home for about a week um, in March for my homecoming where I'll be crowning the new Miss Indiana and also be making some official appearances as Miss America. So for another six weeks, I'll be on the road traveling the country here on Thursday. I'll be heading down to Tampa for the taste of the NFL during the Super Bowl. I'm really excited about that. And then back to New York. This is truly a dream come true for you, isn't it? it? It honestly is. It honestly is. This is something that I've been dreaming of and have been working towards my entire life and um, just started competing for Miss America last year. This was my very first year to ever compete for it, and now look where I am. I mean, all of my wildest dreams are, are honestly coming true. Well, does it sometimes feel like just yesterday you were interning here at Wish TV? <laughs> <laughs> we remember when it you does. came back and you won the it crown for Miss Indiana. Oh, my God. I know I was actually just reminiscing about that yesterday about how the very first day I came back to Wish TV the, um, after I had won the crown of Miss, uh, Miss Indiana I walked in and the assistant to the news director stood up and started saying there she is and everybody <laughs> started clapping and cheering and it, it was just such a warm welcome that you guys gave me whenever I came back home and I miss you guys can't wait to come back home and see you all. Oh we're so proud of you and we miss you too and we Thank hope you you'll so stop much. by and visit us here as well. Oh, I sure will. I Has sure it will. sunk in yet, though? Obviously, you're an aspiring TV journalist, and this has opened a lot of doors. Has it sunk in the sorority that you just joined? No, absolutely not. And I don't think it will for, for a while. You know, the day, um, Saturday, the day of the Miss America pageant, uh, while we were finishing up last minute rehearsals, they had brought a lot of the former Miss Americas back, about 15 to 20 of them. And they all walked across the stage and, and all of us girls back in the dressing room got to see that. And it just kind of sent chills up and down my spine knowing that, you know, one of the us 52 contestants were getting ready to join that legacy and at the end of the night it was me and it just it's an absolutely thrilling experience so many positive emotions every single positive emotion <laughs> that you can possibly think of I've ex been experiencing the last 48 hours and I like I said I don't think it's gonna hit me for a couple weeks but every single day it just keeps getting closer and closer like when I get to introduce myself as Miss America 2009 it's just kind of like oh my goodness I just introduced myself as Miss America you know <laughs> it is <laughs> It is absolutely must be surreal thrilling. for you. It is, we absolutely. We spoke to your parents yesterday. What Have you had a chance to talk with them before you left for New York? I haven't because my schedule has just been so different from theirs. They have left me several voice messages just keeping me up to date on what everything that's going on back at home and just how excited and anxious everybody is to to see me and to support me. Um, and But I haven't actually got to speak with them. But hopefully I'll have like five minutes here or there today so I can give a call home. My dad yesterday, he was so funny. Both, both my parents are teachers and my father is a high school choir director. Director, and he called me and he said, well, I went back to school yesterday, but I didn't get very much teaching then because <laughs> all the students are so busy asking questions and they're just, they're so intrigued with what I'm doing and where I'm going. And, you know, I've got a lot of friends back at home still and they're, they're right there cheering me on. Aww, and that's wonderful. Let's talk about your platform, Community Service, and sure. you are going to be Absolutely. doing a lot of that now uh, representing yeah. Miss America. How excited are you for that? I know. 
I'm absolutely thrilled because the opportunity of being Miss America gives you a chance to reach a broader audience, obviously. So, um, and also having um, President Obama with being a great advocate of community service and promoting that as well. Hopefully we can team up together and, you know, really reach that larger audience and get that message out there because getting involved in our community, you know, going back to the basic necessities, that's what we're going to have to do in order to turn this economy around. So hopefully we can take that message out to more people and really encourage a lot more people to get involved with their communities, even if it's in a, a really small way of just donating your time or a little bit of money to help out somebody. But I'm also really excited to work with our national platform of the Children's Miracle Network. Miss America, the Miss America organization and the Children's Miracle Network have teamed up. Um, they formed a relationship. It's only two years old. Last year, we raised together $1.3 million for children's hospitals across the U.S. And I'll be serving as the official spokesperson and advocate for those children throughout this entire year. So I'm so excited to get started started on that work and then also I get to be the official spokesperson for a program called Zero Smoke uh -huh. which um, is helping stop the smoking epidemic in America so I'll be able to to speak on behalf of that program as well. Wonderful, a good role model there. Katie, Thank I you. loved your intro to the pageant. Have you been able to talk to your scheduler about getting you back here for the Indy 500? Well actually it's really great. My, my brother works for the 500. And so I know that he's been making tons of phone calls trying to figure something out to bring me back there in May for the big race. And I think we can get something worked out. So hopefully it'll all fit in my schedule. I know we've already blocked out those couple of days there so that I can head back to Indiana. Oh, terrific. Well, everyone will be so excited yeah. to see you then. Yeah. And now, aside from the $50,000 scholarship that you get, do you receive anything else, any sort of salary for traveling the country the next year? Well, there is. Um, but the most important thing is the scholarship money. You know, that $50,000, I'm now able to graduate from school debt-free, which is absolutely tremendous. You know, that's what our program is about. We're the leading scholarship provider for young women in the country, awarding more than $45 million every year, which is just tremendous. It's absolutely amazing. And graduating debt-free from college is a huge accomplishment. And now with that scholarship money, I will be looking towards graduate school as a possibility. Of course, I want to get through this year and, and see just what kind of opportunities lie for me on the other side. And what about, um, you, you actually are just one semester shy of graduating. Have you spoken with anyone I back am. at the University of Indianapolis? You know, well, not about schooling. <laughs> They're all just so excited about, you know, this promotion of Miss America coming from that school. I hope that it does a lot of really great things for my school because I absolutely could not have chosen a better university to go to. So um, we haven't really discussed the whole aspect of getting back to school right now. We're just focusing on my years, Miss America. Katie, you know a lot of people want to know your love life. Do you have a boyfriend back here in Indiana? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do have a boyfriend back in Indiana, a boyfriend of three years. His name is Brian, and he actually lives and works in Indianapolis up at Hoffacker Health and Fitness on the north side. So he's a wonderful man, very supportive, and he completely understands my role as Miss America. He's actually the reason I started competing this year. He was a great encouragement to me, and uh, he's, a, he's a great blessing. Oh, that is wonderful. And let's go back to the pageant, because you were battling yeah. a throat infection and laryngitis. I was. You worked was. so hard to be Miss Indiana, and then you worked so hard to lead up to this point what was that like the week leading up to it knowing that you your throat wasn't the way it was a hundred percent you know it was a challenge it definitely was a challenge but it actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise because I had to go on vocal rest for three days in order to just be able to speak in my interview and then also be able to sing for those 90 seconds during the preliminary talent competition. And, you know, it was truly a challenge, but it really brought me closer with the other girls. Um, you know, it's just a true testament to the other girls' characters and their values, how supportive they were of me. You know, before the preliminary competition, they were all coming up to me, hugging me and praying for me and just saying, you know, 
know if there's anything we can do, just let us know because we're there for you. So that's a true testament to them. And then, um, you know, being sick, like I said, was a blessing in disguise because it taught me so much about my limitations, which is so important and how much I can push myself and then also when I have to back down. So um, truly a blessing in disguise. And, you know, God was watching out for me. I put it in his hands. I was I wasn't going to worry about it. I wasn't going to stress about it. And everything worked out for the better. I mean, here we are. The the best possible outcome that could have happened. Absolutely. Katie, any message then to the folks and your friends and family here in Indiana as we wrap up this interview? Just that I love them very much. You know, it is just absolutely phenomenal. All of the text messages, emails, voice messages that I've been receiving from people back at home, um, just supporting me and loving me and just tell them that I love them and thank them all so much. Thank you just isn't enough to show my gratitude towards them. I will forever, forever be in debt to them for everything that they've offered me. And I'm just very, very thrilled and ecstatic that we could bring this home for Indiana. What a great year for Indiana. Well, you certainly make the state proud. Congratulations. Oh, well, Best thank you of so luck, much. and we expect to see thank you when you, you come so back much. here, okay? That sounds fantastic. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thanks, Katie. Good luck. Have fun. Thank you.